America. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining on today. We will be on Facebook, probably on YouTube and join, tell your friends, give them the link and tell them that the good news is the bad news is not true. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Elder Kirk. Let us pray at this time. Father, we are here to bless your holy name. We are grateful for the sixth day of toil and labor. Now you've brought us into the harbor of your Sabbath. And Father, we rest in your finished work today. We are so grateful that one more time we can, uh, uh, we can cast our work aside and leave our cares behind on this day of Sabbath rest. As we come one more time, it is our desires as heart will be will be blessed and, 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 and lives uh, will be totally restored under the preaching of your word. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining this online fellowship right here at the Leighton Stone Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, we are here to worship our King and our Creator, and we are reminded on this day that God created us in his image and for his glory. Uh, we want to reach out to our, our friends and our brothers over in Nigeria, uh, where they're having an unrest right now. We not only think about our own thing, but the things of others. So today we'll be praying uh, for Nigeria, as well as two of the divisions in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, um, I'd like to say a very uh, happy birthday to Rahim. Rahim celebrated a birthday this week, and um, we wish him the very best. We also congratulate him for passing his driving test. And now he has a license to, to drive. <laughs> and uh, we're just so happy for, for him. Today in our, in our service, we will be ministered to um, um, uh, later on by one of our elder, uh, um, elder Denise Ingerton, who will pray for us the, the intercessory prayer. But we, we also have some very special guests. We've heard some of them already. Sister Sandra Etiman from Australia and her friends. But we'll also have in our program today, um, Brother Neville Peters will be doing special music for us. Um, also, also um, um, Sister Stacy uh, Campbell Marshall, that is the sister of um, um, uh, Pastor Andre uh, Campbell. She'll be um, sharing in our service today and and also our friends who were with us last year this time four hands for him that's the music ministry of Jemuel and Donna Maria uh, um, Anderson they will be um, ministering to us and today um, but we want to um, at this time um, just to let you know that our Facebook page is up and I think our YouTube page as well so I'm going to give you um, I'm going to give you license at this time to take uh, uh, maybe just a few seconds and to share um, with some friends or family. Uh, let them know that we are on, on Facebook and also on YouTube. We need to minister um, to each other and to share these messages. The good news is, the bad news is not true. Just to let you know also for those who are making decisions that we believe that we will be having a harvest. And even in these difficult days, people are making uh, decisions. Um, for Jesus. At the end of our service today, we will be having a breakout room. And um, if, you, if you have made that decision, I'm going to ask you to indicate um, in your chat, ask you to indicate in our chat, and then we will contact you, let you know how you can be a part of the breakout group. Myself and the evangelist uh, will be with you uh, to encourage you and to pray for you uh, and, and facilitate your journey into the kingdom. But this time we want to go straight into our health nugget that is brought to us. As a matter of fact, before that, we will have a very special uh, item of music from our brother Neville Peters it's all the way in Florida. I'm longing for your presence to deliver and restore. Let your love wash over me. 
for where your spirit is, I am free to bless your holy name. Let it rain, let it rain. And there were some I'm longing for your presence to deliver and restore. Let your love wash over me. For where your spirit is, I am free to bless your holy name. Let it rain, let it rain. Renew my heart again. I'm longing for your hand. Quench my thirsty soul in this dry and barren land. The latter rain, it must fall in these lands and evil days and I know it may cause some pain when I bless your name so let it rain let it pour I'm longing for your presence to deliver and restore Lord, let your love wash over me. For where your spirit is, I am free to bless your holy name. Oh, let it rain. Let it rain. The latter rain, it must fall in these last and evil days. And I know it may cause me pain when I bless your name. But Lord, let it rain. Let it rain down in my life. Let it rain down in my soul. Even if it causes pain. Even if it causes pain. Let it rain. And also, Every night, we are uh, every day and every session. We we've been blessed with our health nugget from Dr. Fitzroy Graham, and his family is from Hackney Church. And I'm sure many of the members are on here today. And now we're gonna have his session in one minute. You're gonna have his session today. I think it's part two of the session he did, he started on sleep. This is gonna be part two, sleep, part two. One minute, um, Dr. Fitzroy Graham. So studies have shown that sleep can directly affect the amount of years that we live. Our mortality, the rate of mortality is highest in people who have poor sleep and that being the case then what can we do to improve our quality of sleep well let's look at a sleep routine a healthy sleep hygiene that will help us to improve our quality of sleep let's start out remember we mentioned that 
this. To prepare for sleep, we have to start from in the day, the day before the night, that night. And so we begin by making sure that we get good sunlight. Sunlight is known to affect directly our sleep experience later on. We also get physical activity at least every hour. We should get up and start moving. Also, we want to make sure we spoke of our nutrition to make sure that our higher carbohydrate intake occurs earlier on in the day, especially if we can make our breakfast the largest meal for the day. And when it gets to the afternoon, no later than six o'clock, we should have our meals. And we should stay away from snacking after that last meal. So that's nutrition. And then we want to mention specifically that there are certain substances in our body specifically affect our drive to sleep. And one of these is called adenosine. And this uh, chemical forces a surge of uh, hormones and it gets to a point, a peak point when it explodes at night. And guess what we do? Oh, I want to sleep. That specific chemical, adenosine, can be blocked by caffeine. And so we need to get a buildup of adenosine throughout the day to have the explosive tiredness that we need to fall asleep. But if we use caffeine, it blocks the receptors of the adenosine. And then we want to look at light. We mentioned daylight. We want to have a lot of sunlight. But then as the night gets, goes on, we want to reduce the amount of light, especially the blue light that's found in the, our computers, in our laptops, in the background. The last thing we want to do at night is actually look at a phone before we go to bed because then that blue light will turn off the production of melatonin which we spoke of as necessary for us to maintain good sleep and initiation of sleep. Mm -hmm. The other thing is we want to make sure we do, we try to slow down our activities and one of the things that we have to do before we go to bed at night is we have to make sure we try to always keep the noise down because noise can affect especially the phone um, we found that sleep disorders in young people nowadays are on the rise because of the continually texting throughout the night or vibration of the phone <clears throat> or the different sounds that these phones make and basically we're not really sleeping the other thing is we want to make sure our place of sleep be the same place each night so we don't want to be sleeping in different rooms etc we want to stay in one place and that will help us to have the same rhythm uh, of sleep that we need to have because it's all about a biological rhythm. Remember that temperature can directly affect your sleep. The other thing that we want to be aware of is our fluid status. What does that mean? That we're not having very salty things before we go to bed because then that pulls water from our blood system. So we need to make sure we're drinking lots of water. Um, not so that we can stay up at night, but from midday onwards up till about five, we want to be drinking water. We want to make sure that we are not taking a lot of salty foods at that time. Sleep and immunity. So we know that sleep directly affects our immune function. And so sleep has been found by many researchers to uh, either suppress or enhance our production of T and B cells and our white blood cells. People who are deficient in sleep seem to have twice as many viral infections than people who are sleeping well. And this is very specific because we have basically classified our immune system into an innate response and an adaptive response. What does that mean? The innate response occurs in hours and the the adaptive one takes a while to adapt and that's what we call the adaptive one. An adaptive one is where we have T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. And you know we've heard about these viral infections like HIV and, and COVID-19. Well, the T cells are specifically involved in killing these cells. And sleep deprived people have very low function in their production of certain chemicals which come from these cells which are used to destroy these viruses. And there's a lot of evidence that shows that people who have short-term sleep problems, they will probably have a better outcome when it comes to 
viral infections and people who have chronic um, sleep problems. After a night of sleep deprived state, we have found that people actually lose their natural killer cell powers. What does that mean? The ability to destroy viruses. But when we give them sleep to repair their body, we find that the function of the NK cells, which are the natural killer cells, they revert back to normal baseline function and they're able to kill viruses. Well, what does that mean then? That means that it's so important for us to have sleep so that we can actually have a healthy immune system and we can fight bacterial and viral infections and even inflammatory and cancerous disorders. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Fitzroy um, Graham. And um, I, we are proud of Dr. Fitzroy Graham, not just be, uh, because he's from London, uh, from Hackney, but um, I, I, we're proud of him because he's a product of Adventist education. And um, I'd, I'd like to say a very special tribute to uh, his mom, Sister Carmen Graham. Um, um, To, to, to took the time um, uh, took the time and and um, I, I, I believe um, she believed so much in Christian education that she was willing to sacrifice um, to send her children to Adventist institutions and and Dr. Peter Graham is, is a former um, 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 student of the Harrison Memorial High School in Montego Bay Jamaica my former high school also Western this college now Northern Caribbean University and then he went on to Monte Morales um, University in Mexico, in Mexico, and we are so proud of him. And uh, we pay tribute to his mother for what um, she has accomplished um, um, with her uh, children, and the legacy um, uh, lives on. Um, if you um, are able, well, we are inviting you to join us at five thirty this this afternoon uh, when Dr. Fitzroy Graham will be here to have an interactive health session. So if you do have any, any questions on sleep um, um, or anything else, um, Dr. Fitzroy Graham will be here at 5.30 this afternoon. We're here not just to um, help you uh, um, to, to add um, years to your life, but life to your, to your years. So do pass the word along and uh, we'll be here at 5.30 this evening for an interactive health session. Now, throughout the course of this evangelistic campaign, we've initiated a, a, a new feature, and that is to pray for the divisions around the world, the seven Adventist divisions around the world. Uh, on this Sabbath, we will be um, praying for the, for the inter-Europe division um, and also the Israeli field. Uh, the Israeli field, uh, they have membership of 900 members um, amid a population of 7.7 .7 million and we really need um, to pray for them. The, the, the Inter-Europe Division um, has uh, uh, 180,000 members out of a population of 340 million people and we want to lift them up in prayer today as we pray uh, um, for God to move um, around um, um, in, these, in these divisions. Uh, um, so at this time I'm going to invite um, uh, our elder um, sister Denise Ingerton, and she'll be taking us to the throne of God's grace. Okay. Oh, good. Are you unmuted? Yes, I am. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it is Sabbath again, and we thank you so much for keeping us safely through yet another week. As we consider your awesome power, we are left with no choice but to praise you and to lift you up and magnify your holy name, a name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, who still has power to save even to the guttermost. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, you are Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals, Jehovah Nisi, our banner, El Shaddai, and so much more. And you are able and still capable of meeting and supplying all our needs. And we come to you today 
empty, O oh Lord, needing to be filled with you. So we pray, O oh Lord, that you may please us, sweet Jesus. Fill us with your grace. Fill us with your merciful loving kindness, O oh Lord. Fill us that we can be vessels of honor for you. We pray, O oh Lord, you'll continue to bless us in every area of our lives. Bless us and guide us in order that our steps may be ordered according to your will. And that, Father, we can continue to glorify and praise your holy name. As we enter your presence, O oh Lord, because of who you are and all you've done for us, we join our earthly praises with those of the heavenly angels who are crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The whole earth is full of your glory. Please bless us. Accept our feeble praise to you today, we pray. In these distressing times, Lord, we want to place your peace into our hearts. Help us, O oh Lord, to claim your words where you said and you promised to keep us safe. So help us to leave all our cares and our fears into your loving hands, trusting you to supply all our needs. We also want to intercede on behalf of our brethren in Nigeria and the unrest that are over there. Father, we know you told us that there will be wars and rumors of war, but we pray in the name of Jesus, the same name that is a strong tower, that you may be with your people. Father, intervene in these governments, O oh Lord, and help that your will will be done. Help your people to continue to stand up and stand out and speak up against atrocities. That, Father, we may know that we are each other's keepers and that we may continue to do what is right, morally acceptable in your sight, and to relieve the suffering of each other. Father, we pray you may beat back the forces of evil and help that men may make decisions that are pleasing and right in your sight. We also pray for those of the European and Israeli field. Father, we will know the work is hard. The work is major and the laborers are few. Please, we pray, O oh Lord, that you may send laborers into your vineyard so that, Father, we can speed up the work of saving souls so the devil will be defeated and you can come and take us all home to glory once more. So help us, O oh Lord, to do whatever we can wherever we are in order to fulfill these missions. And wherever we go, we may stand up and be a little witness for you in this dark corner of the earth. We pray for your man's servant in a special way, Pastor Barron. We pray, Lord, you may continue to cover him, speak through him, bless him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Help him to be filled with your Holy Spirit so that his words will find receptive hearts and your spirit will transform hearts and lives as he speaks your words. We pray you may bless your people and help us, O Lord, that wherever we go, our hearts will be so receptive and that Father, others looking on can see you in us and want to know more of you. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for what you're doing. Continue to guide, keep, and protect us as we go through this day. And we leave all this service into your loving hands. And thank you so much for what you have done, what you're doing, and what you will do. These are the mentioned mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you uh, so much, Elder. And uh, we, we are crazy enough um, to believe that something, we say it every day, every evening, something is bound to happen when we pray. Uh, the spirit moves and we are not confused because something is bound. We just believe it. We just believe that something is bound to happen when we pray and we pray in the name of Jesus. Well, we have now reached the part of the service where we would hear God's manservant with the word of God. And uh, I'm so excited at, at this time, um, Pastor Barron, uh, once again, um, we're so delighted to have you and for consenting to preach the word of God at this time, um, not just in Leighton Stone, but around the world. And we, we are so grateful for all those um, who are joining in um, on Facebook Live, uh, YouTube, and also on Zoom. And let me just say, pa Pastor uh, Byron, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, ask, um, uh, we, we have um, Pastor Perry, um, our, our statesman, um, um, and I'm gonna ask Pastor Perry to unmute his mic and I'm gonna put him on the, the spot. and. Um, to give a word of greeting and a word of um, of introduction um, to you, Pastor. But just before he comes, uh, um, just to let you know, um, pa Pastor, that um, Sister Stacy Marshall passed on her greeting. She'll be doing for us a song of appeal after the ser after the the, the sermon. Um, but Pastor Perry, um, say a word, and then the next um, 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 song you'll be hearing is that. Um, of the meditation brought to us um, by a couple that is familiar to Elder, that is um, Donna Maria Anderson and also Jemuel Anderson. Their ministry 
is called Four Hands for Him. They were with us um, in the flesh at Leighton Stone last week, along with um, Sister Carol Barron, and now we'll be having them ministering to us. And um, um, this, this, the song that they'll be playing is Fresh Off the Press. Uh, so, so most people will be hearing it for the very first time. But Pastor Perry, um, please um, um, unmute your mic and I'll give you the floor at this time to bring greeting and a word of introduction. Is it on mute? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we highlight Pastor Perry. Yeah. <laughs> He's laughing. Yeah. This man, uh, this man, as you said, never grows old. <laughs> Pastor Baron, hey, it's buddy. so good to, to see you in oh, person. Praise, praise the Lord, Doc. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. And um, it, it, although you are you're not, you're still virtual. <laughs> Oh, brothers, what a, what a joy. What a joy yes. to see you this Sabbath. It's a great pleasure. And we, we want to thank you for the years of service mm. and, and what you have done for this country. Boy, oh, uh, boy. In your, in your many sermons. And uh, to know that you're alive. And it seems as if I don't know if you can move like um, <laughs> some to say you could move like it used to. But I'm quite certain that um, the Lord has given you strength and we love you and praise God that you're alive. And you are still ministering to us. Do I remember, do I remember some of the things the Lord led us through to get the church in the United Kingdom where it is this morning? And the camp meetings that you have ministered at, those <laughs> camp meetings. <laughs> oh, yes. what a blessing, Doc Perry. Yes, it, uh, although we are all getting there, Yet I feel that the presence of the Lord mm. is still hovering over us. <laughs> Some of our friends have passed on. Yes. And we, we are still here. And it's a great pleasure. And I hope uh, your family is okay. We praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> it's good to see you, man. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. God be uh, praised. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay, God bless. Welcome.
So it seems to be a problem with the video to start halfway. So we will just go right into the sermon at this present moment. Pastor Baron, over to you. Well, good evening, everybody. Happy Sabbath. What a joy, what a joy. I tell you, Dr. Uh, Brother Vaughn, you have made my Sabbath. It, it's, it's just quarter after seven Sabbath morning here in the state of Florida, in the land of the U.S. of A., and, and what a joy you have done. And, and I just have to thank you for the people that you have pulled together to minister to the saints of God uh, during this campaign, a campaign where the good news is the bad news is not true. And, and Neville Peters, are you still listening out there? Boy, you warmed my heart with that song. Uh, you know I love you and, and give my greetings to your wife. And uh, Brother Thorpe, who was the trio from, uh, from Australia? Looked like I should have known one of the young ladies in that trio. Yeah. So Sandra Etiman from Australia. Lord Sandra, I met her when she was a little girl and I took to her. We kept it in touch down through the years, but somehow or other, I think she gave up on the old man, but she's still singing and the group sounded so great this morning. Hi, Sandra. And the old man loves you. He just loves you more than ever. And then to hear my niece and her husband, my nephew, Four hands for him. Oh, has God blessed them as a couple? Has God continues to bless them in their ministry to him? Uh, uh, and I know, I know um, how God has blessed because her mother taught her music. And uh, my mother taught her mother music. We're siblings. And uh, it's just what a Sabbath this is turning out to be. But I'm not going to take much longer. I just want to praise the Lord for Pastor Thorpe. And, and I tell you, Dr. Fitzroy, the information you've been giving out here each night, uh, it's, it's helping me. Uh, I, I came into this meeting not thinking I needed help. But your, your uh, nuggets are more than nuggets. They're, they're, they're gold-filled. And I'm putting some of these things into practice. But... I want to start out this morning uh, talking about the good news is the bad news is not true. Uh, I was ministering in South America and when we started out in, I think, Bolivia and whatnot, and we were making our way through to Brazil by car. And what was so interesting about that itinerary and the travel, the brethren said, we, there's so many interesting sites heading from where we were into Brazil, instead of flying you or taking the train, we're going to have you transported by automobile, by car. And I agreed because that would give me more time to travel, which means I could nap and relax and take it easy. But the thing about it was that was so interesting, the pastor who they assigned to drive me could not speak English. And his passenger myself could not speak any Spanish, let alone Portuguese. <clears throat> so as we were leaving town, we, he took me through a university campus and I, and I mentioned to him by sign language, is, <clears throat> is there a bookstore on this campus that you are aware of? He said, yes. And I said, I'd like to visit it real quick. And what I did, I was moved by the Holy Spirit of God to go into the bookstore and we were going to spend two weeks in the car not speaking English and me not speaking Spanish or Portuguese. So I went in and I, the young lady understood English and I told her what my uh, predicament was and I wanted a dictionary where it would go from uh, Portuguese to English and English to Portuguese. I bought the book, got in and we started. And well, boy, that book was passed back and forth between us for two weeks. And do you know the Lord was in that car with us? Because we were able to communicate. We were able to share with each other about each other and comment about the meetings along the way. But here's the point I want to tell you. 
as we were leaving Argentina and going to the border to cross over into Brazil, he said, I'm gonna show you something you have never seen before. And as we drove along heading for the Argentine-Brazil border, at one point, as we approached the border, he said, put your window down, Pastor. I want you to hear something. Well, I heard nothing except the wind and the philosophy of the wind, the sound of the wind as we passed through. And uh, I said, I hear nothing. He said, just listen. So as we checked through the border and we gained clearance into Brazil, he said, put your window down again. And, and I put it down and what I thought was the roar of the wind created by the car's speed, it was a different sound and it kept getting louder. And, it, and I said, what is that sound, man? He said, just keep listening. And finally, it was a roar. It was a roar such as I'd never heard before. And then I saw a sign and he said, we're gonna turn off the road here. And a few miles later, the, the roar was horrendous. And come to find out, he had taken me to a, uh, one of nature's wonders, Iguazu Falls. We got out of the car and we walked to the falls where I saw more water in one spot that I had ever seen before, Iguazu Falls. And as I stood there in wonderment, I said, God, where is this water coming from? And it was 24 seven and people were there moving around and you could go down below and get in a boat, which I refused to do because I saw people coming off the boat. They were drenched, they were wet, they were sopping wet. And as they, I, I stood there and we walked around and we, we, we did the tourist thing, but I was still saying, where all this water coming from? But then as I went back to the to exit, there was a sign that was carved, a message carved in wood that was hung up there. And it was a message from Mrs. Beth Truman, first lady of President Truman of these United States in that day. And the message said, Shame on you, Niagara. And I said, isn't this interesting? I had been to Niagara Falls on the Canadian American side several times. And when she said, shame on you, Niagara, I knew exactly what she was doing. She was making a comparison between the falls. She was making a comparison about the size the volume of water and even the sound. But as we drove away and since that time, I couldn't help, I just kept wondering and thinking, boy, that water, and it dawned on me, centuries before that, water came into the picture. Centuries before that, there, it was just water. And, and I, since then I have taken my Bible and I, as when I preach this thing, the good news is that the bad news is not true. I remember sitting in my office one day and I was prayerfully preparing for a message. And the thought came, preach the last day signs and wonders. Cause Jesus says, uh, in the last days, there'll be signs in the sky, wonders, and uh, and 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 I I turned in my Bible and, and I I was reading and studying uh, over Matthew chapter twenty four and, and where where Jesus says in verse thirty two of Matthew twenty four, he said, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I long for that day. I remember times as a child 
standing on the back porch of our apartment building there in New Jersey. And I'd spend that time looking up in the heavens. Where are you coming from, God? Which direction? How, how far away are you now? But I still look up at the sky. And every day, it's a new sight. But he says he's coming with power. He's coming with glory. And he shall send his angels with great sound of a trumpet, which Pastor Baron, you need to unmute your mic, please. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near. And one of the disciples must have asked, Lord, how near? And he says, even at the door. And I, I recall thinking that it's so interesting. Most places I have visited in ministry for God, most places somebody will always invite me home to dinner. And, and, and I put a little thing together with my Holy Ghost imagination, even at the doors. And I, I, I've said, I've thought, I've planned it. Isn't it interesting that when people invite me home to dinner as a guest and I arrive at the, on the prescribed day and I'm at the right house and I walk up on the porch and I ring the doorbell and a child comes to the door Hello, and I said, hi, I'm Pastor Barron. Mommy, it's Pastor Barron. And instead of her saying, come in, she says to one of the children, clean up the living room. She says to somebody else, get the pots and the pans out. Let's get ready to cook. And she says to somebody else, set the dinner table. But I say to her, it's too late. It's too late. The meal should have been prepared. Everything should have been in readiness for my coming. I'm at the door. This is not the time to prepare. This is the time to invite and say, come on in. We welcome you. And Jesus says, when you see all these things, it's so near. He said, it's, we're even at the door. And verily I say unto you, verse 34, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And we're looking at the Bible through prophetic eyes and service. And we know what, what is happening with last day signs rapidly fulfilling before our very eyes. Jesus is on his way back here. But of that day and hour, no man knows. No, not even the angels in heaven at that time, Jesus was speaking fully man while on earth. He didn't even know. But back in glory, seated at the right hand of his father, the two, the three are one. Of course, they know. But, at, but then he says these words. As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Oh, thinking of standing there at Iguazu Falls, watching all of that water, hearing the sound it created, it generated. I began to think 
that there was a waterfall stranger and stronger and of more volume than that. I thought about the days of Noah. I thought about all the water that came down from the fountains above and belched up from the fountains beneath and flooded this world. And for 40 days and night, the water came down and the water belched up until there was so much water on this planet, it was 15 meters above the highest mountain tops. And you can prove it because scientists and archeologists in their continued exploration, they're still finding uh, evidence on high mountains that there had to have been a flood for those items to be there. And I think of Mount Ararat, Turkey. They are now finding more evidence. They found an outline of what could be Noah's Ark atop that mountain. And so Jesus says, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. What do you mean, so shall it be? And he goes on to explain himself. He says, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. The day that Noah entered into the ark, verse 39, and knew not until the flood came, again took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, we know about the eating. Before God created man and placed him in the garden, he had already set up his menu, his dietary laws. He, 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 on, the, on the sixth day, he knew that man, it would not be good for man to be alone. And so he created, he made woman. Adam said, your name is Eve, you are the mother of all. And so he brought those two together and people are still getting married. And even though marriage in our society is horrendous, even though there's more divorces in society as well as in the churches, something has gone wrong with marriage created by God and given to man and woman to live together as one. But the old enemy of the home, the enemy of marriage, oh, may God help us. He steps in and he brings disruption. He brings unfaithfulness. He brings, oh, he just, just tears it apart. Can't believe the number of Christians who right now are on their way to the divorce court. There, there was a couple who was granted uh, the decrement of divorce a couple of years ago back here in the States. And, and the newspaper gave the story how when the judge uh, gave them the decree of divorcement and, and they were looking at, across the courtroom at each other, he said, now let me say something to you. I've just separated you by the law of the land. He said, but I want you to know in the books of heaven that says whatever man joins together on earth, God joins together. He said, you're still married in the eyes of God. Oh, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming soon. We've got to make up our minds. There's only one way, and that's God's way for us to live a healthy life by, by eating, the way we dress, the by, by the way we develop character. And Jesus says, as it was. And when you read that book, Great Controversy, that I have a copy of in my office, my library, boy, when you read the chapter on the flood and how the people were leading up to the flood, their lifestyle, people created in the image of God, living lower than the beast of the field. And so Jesus says again, as it was, they were eating and they were drinking and they were being frivolous. But something, another thought hit me as I'm looking at this text this morning or this evening for you. There was something else the Holy Spirit brought to my attention. And as I read this thing, 
I thought about this was in the days of Noah. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And I kept this thought kept ringing in my head. How was it in the days of Noah? What is God asking? What is God trying to bring to our attention? And then it dawned on me. What was the population of the earth at the time of the flood? Because he kept saying, all, all, all. They came and took them all away. The flood came and took them all away. And so I went, I went to the book of Genesis and, and, and I, I turned over there and, and I, I was reading in the seventh chapter. Uh, uh, but you, if you go back to the sixth chapter, you'll see where God says he saw in verse five, the wickedness of man. God saw the wickedness of man, that it was great in the earth. And you know, each, each day you listen to the news and, and you ask yourself the questions when you hear of the horrendous crimes and the, and the terrible violence uh, by man. And, and you, you ask yourself, can it get any worse? And, and you have to say to yourself, these people committing these crimes, the, the corruption, the violence, the deceptions, they think that there is no God, or if there is no God, if, if there is a God, he doesn't care. He, he's so busy running the universe. But the Bible says God saw. He saw the wickedness of man. He saw how great it was in the earth. He saw that man had reached a point in his intellect that every, the, the, every imagination of his mind, of his brain, of his thoughts, were evil 24-7, 24-7. He thought evilness and wickedness. And he just, it seems in every day you hear the news, you say, can it get any worse? Can it get any worse? And it, it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, there's only one way out. I'm going to destroy him. And my friends, we have watched destruction from storms and violence and earthquakes and tsunamis and fires in unquenchable. We, we've seen it flood sweeping out whole villages, entire cities. And God is saying, I can't put up with it any longer. And I wonder, Lord, What's going to happen? What's happening? You're watching us. You're seeing us. You're our creator, and we're your created. And yet, the image of you in man is slowly disappearing. I sometimes wonder as I watch the look up in the heavens, and I say, Lord, such man is bringing about such change on this planet. Do you still see it? Can you still see your creative ability in it? And thank God your spirit of prophecy says to us that, that the beauties of creation still crop through. They still come through in certain areas of the country, certain areas of the world. And you know, I remember driving along in some countries or flying ab above and looking down. You can still see some of creation's beauty. Praise the Lord. But he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming. And I ask myself, he keeps using the word all. And then I ask, what, how many people were on the earth at the time of the flood? How many people were there? What was the population? And you know, Sandra, I, I was in your country one time and, and, and I was visiting a bookstore and I found an old book that was called the, 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 um, the Genesis Flood. And as I picked that book up and, and, and turned to the, they had the, the, the population, world population at the time of the flood. And the authors, two men, the authors came to the conclusion that at the time of the flood, 
the population of the world was anywhere from 10 billion to 12 billion people. Not millions, not thousands, but way back then, the population of the world was 10 billion to 7 billion, 12 billion. And, and, and I said, that's a high number. But then not too long ago, I was in contact with the Institute for Creation. And I asked the same question here in 2020. What was the population of the world back in Noah's day leading up to flood time? And, and, and the Institute for Creation using an electronic spreadsheet and, and they made an analysis of that. They, they, they went they took the time from Adam to Noah's flood. They said that was a span of 1,656 years. And during that time, uh, the, the population grew much more rapidly than it does today. In fact, they said uh, uh, the population of the world, the world using uh, using, uh, what do they call it, um, uh, electronic analysis. They took into consideration uh, uh, childbirth, the number of children born per family. They, they took into consideration the lifespan and they boiled it down that the population of the world at the time of Noah's flood was 10 trillion people. I'm amazed. I, I gasp for air. That many people? That many people? And Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I'm, I'm concerned about those figures, whether they're low, seven to 10, 12 billion people, or as the Institute for Creation says, 10 trillion people, I'm concerned. And the Bible says when the flood came, they knew not until it took them all away. Well, sir, what does the Bible have to say? So I went over to First Peter. Well, let's let's stay let's stay in Genesis right now, and look at the chapter seven, where the Lord came to Noah. Here's the good news. God says He'll never do anything without contacting His servants, the prophets, whether it's good or bad in the eyes of men. And the Lord looked down and he saw a man and his family, and we know his name was Noah. And the Lord said unto Noah, I want you, I'm going to destroy the earth. I'm going to, I can't stand the wickedness, the violence, the idolatry. And Noah said, but Lord, you're going to kill me too? I've been faithful to you. Let me tell you something, saints. When you're on the Lord's side, whatever is in the coming in the future or arriving at the present, you never have to negotiate with God. You never have to bargain with God. You never have to ask him, haven't I been good to you? Haven't I done all that you've asked? Haven't I been faithful? You won't have to do it because God keeps a perfect record of every human being born on this planet. He, he has angels recording every thought in your head, every word that comes out of your mouth. He keeps a perfect record of your activities. He keeps a work at a good record of, of, of everything you've done and your intentions and, and, and about, about why you did it. And that is the record he, you don't have to ask him. And, and seated beside him is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
who watches your every move. And he knows when a, a sinner meets him and says, I love you so much for loving me. What can I do for you to save me? And Jesus says, just accept me as your savior. And God the Father says, I sent him into the world just to see you and to meet you and to save you from your sins. You don't have to bargain. I remember as a soldier overseas, things were not going well. And I remember one night sitting out in the quietness and I just got to thinking and I said to God, I want to go home. Can you help me? And then I heard myself say these words, God, I'm not going to bargain with you to get me home. Nor am I going to negotiate for you to get me home. I'm just going to trust you to get me home. And I'll never forget about a month later, I was, the food had come and I was standing there to receive mine when my name was called, Baron. And I turned around, there was an officer and he had a clipboard in his hand. I said, yes, sir, what can I do for you? He said, pack your bags, you're going home. <laughs> I dropped my tray. I started shouting. I didn't have to negotiate. God has a plan for each of us through salvation through Jesus Christ. And so he said, I'm going to destroy it. No, I'm going to destroy it. It's mine. I can do whatever I want with it. And the Bible says, Noah followed the counsel of God. And he began to preach. And he went to Home Depot and brought out all their lumber. He went to all the other stores of, car, uh, of construction materials and he started building that ark. But I keep hearing God say, ark or no ark, as it was in the days of Noah. I go on. Seven billion to 12 billion people. And right now, the population of the world stands at 7.2 billion people. Do you mean if Jesus were to come tonight, if he were to come this coming week, if he were to come by December 31, 2020, do you mean to say all will be destroyed? But no, because the Bible says when the floods came and the people were locked in only out of 7 billion to 12 billion people, low number, or 10 trillion people, only eight were saved. And the Bible confirms, you, I climbed up on the top in my Holy Ghost imagination to the roof of the ark. And I found one window and I looked down and I peered through that window and I saw Mr. and Mrs. Noah. I saw Mr. and Mrs. Japheth and Mr. and Mrs. Ham. I saw his, their, his, their brother, their third son and his wife. And I counted, I looked around the ark. All I saw were animals and birds and food stuff and water supplies, but I kept counting. And I couldn't count more than eight people because that's all I saw. And then I read the Bible and it confirms only eight were saved. Eight people out of seven billion, which is the, the number of the earth's population now. If Jesus were to come soon and he's coming soon, do you mean to tell me only eight saved? It, 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 it frightens me. I, 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 I've been walking with the Lord a long time. I, I've gone through stuff for the Lord a long time. I, I, I've taken abuse from people in the church. I've been heaped on and lied on by people in the world. I've served the Lord and I'm not sitting here tonight to say to you, Lord God, 
Haven't I been good? Haven't I been a faithful servant? You're going to kill me? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Out of the high numbers of the population of the world leading to the, up to the flood, only eight were saved. Somewhere in my library, there's a book that talks about this very subject. And the servant of the Lord says, in the end times, when Jesus comes back, as he prepares to come back, I'm quoting, only so many, he breaks it up into 20, not one in 20 shall be saved. If life goes on as it is, as we know it today, and Jesus is ready to say to the Father, shut down probation for the world, close the investigative judgment, let's go down. Not one in 20 are ready to receive him. What in the world has gone wrong? So I sat down with my Bible and my other sources, resources. Noah preached. And God found him so faithful that he entrusted him not only to construct the ark, but to preach the last day warning message to a dying world. And Noah preached with clarity. He was an humble fellow. He preached and people listened. And I believe in my Holy Ghost imagination that many people who heard the message, received the message. And when they saw him building that ark, they volunteered their time. Noah, can we help you? This thing is coming. And if it's going to happen the way you say it is, you need help and we need salvation. And they helped. But I kept asking myself, why if they were on the ark to help build it, why weren't they on it when the door closed and the floods came? And if other people were of that mentality and the Bible says in the spirit of prophecy, they were giant, not physically, but they, were, they had gigantic intellects. Why, if they heard Noah, why didn't they believe? Why didn't they join the ark crew and stay on board so that they could have been saved? Oh, my friends, some questions we don't have answers to, but I boiled this thing down. Could it be that the antediluvians as people living up to the flood are noted to be, if the antediluvians, if they were so, they were so in love with the world, that they just couldn't give it up, which made it very easy for the Satan who deceives the whole world to cause them to lose their souls. False teachers, we're told, appeared on the scene. Why are you so squeamish? Why are you so concerned? God is a good God. He's a God of love. He's not, he doesn't have time to judge you. He doesn't have time to watch you. Uh, God is so busy running the universe that, and his love is so strong. He's not going to punish you. And don't you hear people saying something similar today? God is a God of love. And you see back there on the ark, these big round uh, yellow circular faces with upturned mouth. God loves you. Oh, my brothers and sisters, even though God loves you, there's a text in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. 
the evil person shall not go unpunished. The evil person and those lying false teachers under the prompting of the devil, they fail to tell those people back there that God's wrath is just like his love. Habakkuk says his wrath is as pure and holy as his love. There's purity behind God's anger. Being God, Habakkuk chapter one and verse 13 says that he cannot contemplate wrong with pleasure, that his eyes are too pure to look on evil. And at the same time, his purity is too intense to ignore what the false teachers fail to give a clear meaning of. My brothers and sisters, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What is your attitude about the love of God? What is your relationship to him in this time leading up to his imminent return? Oh, my brothers and sisters, remember, God is God. His law for life, like his character, never changes. My friends, as we go through this week of outreach with the love of God to saints and sinners alike, check your life. Are you on the ark or off the ark? Are you on the ark doing the things that ark people do? Are you on the ark criticizing the message, criticizing the God of the message, criticizing the taking advantage and abusing the love of God? I preached last night. It's time for us to come out and stand up and be counted for Jesus Christ. There's another reason. Jesus says without uh, he says, uh, I'll give you one other point where the spirit of prophecy points out that many who heard Noah believed, came under conviction, accepted the message, and as I said earlier, helped to construct the ark. And I like to think in my Holy Ghost imagination that one evening when work was over, Noah was walking across the deck just inspecting the work that had been accomplished that day. And in my Holy Ghost imagination, he came across a group, a group standing at the rail, looking beyond the ark back into the world. It was nighttime and, and he along with the crowd could see the lights of the city. He could hear the sounds from the city, but he overheard some of the sounds coming from that crowd. Somebody said, man, since I've been on this ark, working on this ark, I miss the sights. I miss the sounds. I, 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 I miss coming home from work in the evening and changing clothes and going to the club. I, I, I miss running with my buddies. I miss running with my friends. But, but we're on the ark. And we have none of that here. I miss it so much. I'm in the church. I've accepted Christ as my savior, but I miss that world. And, I'm, and, and people are trying to bring the sound of music from the world into the church. And you come into the church and we see us dressing just like the world. And, and, and you, 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 you come on the ark and you see people busy doing ark stuff, but there's a longing in their hearts. For the world and God said we must not be like the world we must not even be of the world he prayed to his father I'm not going to ask you to take them off the ark but just keep them while they're on the ark we're here to take care of ark business Jesus came down he took care of heaven's business and he died in our stead that we might have salvation and go with him from time into eternity where are you on the ark this morning? It's one thing to be on the ark, but it's another thing to be inside the ark. Where are you? 
on the ark this morning. There's a text over in 1 John, chapter 2. 1 John, chapter 2. And I want you to look with me as I read. Uh, I want to read 1 John, chapter 2. And uh, I want you to look at verses 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17, where God says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And let's listen to verse 17. And the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that does the will of God will survive the storm. Where are you this morning? You're sitting at home. You don't have to get dressed for the Sabbath. You're sitting in your car, driving along, listening to the sound of my voice. But where are you in the Lord? Where are you? I think of so many young people in the church, grew up in the church, was conceived in the church, were dedicated at birth to God, given a Christian education, but something has happened along the way. You have become rebellious, disobedient. You lack respect for your parents and others, but you still come to church. But remember, God sees you. God loves you. God said, I died for you. And if I had to do it again, I would. But I'm expecting you not only to be on the ark, but in the ark. And respect the leadership and the authority of the ark. Learn how to love God and transfer that love. Let it be with your parents and each other. You, 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 you're ark people. And I had a young lady say to me, she said, but I, I, I didn't ask to be born. My parents brought me into the world. I don't have to, I'm not worried about this ark. And when she said that to me, she began to cry. I asked, why are you crying? She said, pastor, I've had it all wrong. I don't know why all I wanted to do was hurt my parents. They kept me from having fun. I couldn't go to places of entertainment like the other kids. She, she said, I forgot. I was a child of the ark. Oh, my young friends, get your act together. Oh, my married couples, get your act together. Satan will bring deception into your life. Oh, you, I, some of us were talking. Why is there so much divorce in the church? Why? And you, you, you meet the couples before the, the ceremony and everything is, well, the Lord brought us together. Oh, the Lord brought us together. And we give God the praise for each other. Kiss, 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 kiss. And sometimes sex, 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 sex. And then they bring you and they make the announcement. I can't stand her. He makes me sick. We're going to split. What happened to God in the marriage? We're art people. Let's show it. Let's live it. Let's be it in Christ Jesus. Oh, my dear Christian friends. This thing of being saved and Satan, the text says, if any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Listen, for all that is in the world, and God lets us know in this text that as 
big and bad and ugly as Satan is, as powerful as he is, as strong as he is, God has limited his, his power on earth. The devil can come at you with only three temptations. No more. No more. He, ha he comes with the lust of the flesh. He comes tempting with the lust of the eyes. And he comes tempting with the pride of life. He can't move outside of that circle. You know that. God has warned you. But God has also given you the power of the Holy Spirit. Not only to resist this evil one, but it gives you enough sense to say when you see him coming, run. Or other times just stand there and the power of God in you and around you will raise up a standard against him and hold him back from you. You don't have to lose your position in the ark. And then let me, let me give you something else here. The good news is you don't have to drown. When that door closed, the animals had enough sense to come in driven by the Lord. The birds of the air had enough sense to fly in under the guidance of God. Noah and Mrs. Noah said, we're here. We might as well stay here. Ham, Sham, and Jacob with their young wives said, listen, we, we, we hear the sounds. We know what they're doing, but let's stay with in the ark. And in my Holy Ghost imagination, I was standing there, the kids from high school and the university, they passed by the ark every day, every day of their lives. And they would stand there and listen to the crowd berating Noah. You don't know what you're talking about. There's never been water falling from the heavens. It never will be. And you're talking about a flood, whatever that means. And you're building this huge cruise ship. And the kids listened to their parents. And they would come by the ark after school and meet for a while. And they'd pick up the same ridiculing. But on this particular day, the birds had flown in. The animals, two by two, had, had, had walked in. And on this particular day, one of the guys from school broke away from the crowd and started walking towards the ark. And the kids hollered, hey, where are you going? What are you doing? He said, uh, I'm just gonna take a look around. And as he walked up the gangway, they said, are you stupid? Are you crazy? Come back here. But at the same time, Noah was standing at the top of the gangway saying, keep coming, son, keep coming. In Chicago O'Hare's airport, Boy, walking from terminal to terminal to connect with your flight. Oh, you can get so tired, especially at my age. Oh, you and, you, and, the, and the baggage that you're pulling behind you gets so cumbersome. And, and, and you're ready to give up at my age. But as you approach a, 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 a motorized walkway, there's a voice in the air. You can't see it. You can't, hear, you can't see anybody, but that voice, it's very soft and gentle, and it just says these words over and over again. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. And something happens inside of me when I hear it. My weariness is still there, but I'm encouraged to keep walking. And I get on that electronic walkway, and I end up at my gate on time to board my flight. And that kid started up the gangway and Noah was standing there saying, keep coming. And the kids were hollering, come back here. We're gonna tell your folk on you. Come on, man, don't be stupid. And he looked around as he stood in the doorway. He said, I'm only gonna look around. And Moses said, come on in, son. Now watch this. As that boy who had been heckling the preacher, who had been making fun of the preacher, who had been criticizing the message, who had been knocking everything, even the sight of the boat. He stepped over the threshold into the ark with one intent, with one purpose. I just wanna look around. 
I want to see where he put the elephants, the hippopotamus. I want to see where he put those birds. I want to see how he's going to ventilate this thing to keep the odor down. I want to see where he put all the food and water. And as he stepped over the threshold, Noah stepped behind him and God jumped down from heaven and slammed the door behind the two of them, locking them in with Noah's wife, locking them in with Noah's sons and daughters-in-law and all the animals and all the fowl of the air. I wonder if that kid turned around and said, let me out of here. Hey man, you locked me and my parents, hey. And the kids outside said, I told you something was gonna happen. And he was locked in there for seven days. Seven days. And on the seventh day, somebody outside asked, did you feel that? And the boy's parents were there. Let him out, give us our son. And the boy was saying to Moses, let me out. I just came here to look around. But Noah said, man, I built this thing, but God has the key and I can't let you out. And he hollered to the people outside, God has the key and I can't let you in. There comes a time in our salvation in our love relationship with the Lord. On board this spiritual ark. I don't want to get off. I don't want to go back out there. I have found Jesus in the ark, Jesus in the church. He is so comfortable. He is so loving. He is so kind. Even though I kick on the door, let me out of here. He, he is so encouraging that I've made up my mind after all of these years. And how many times did I try to get out, to get out? But I feel his arms encircle me. I hear him, be still my soul. Everything has been worked out for your joy and your salvation. Oh, my brothers and sisters, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Trust God, trust God. The good news is, if you're on board the spiritual ark this morning, Ask God to come into your life and through the power of the Holy Spirit, transform you, make you a new lady, make you a new man, make you a new married couple, make you an obedient child. The end is in sight. And so I've been asking, well, let me ask some of the Bible characters. When Jesus comes back here the second time, to remove, to redeem his own from the earth. With the population, low numbers, 7 billion plus, or high numbers, 10 trillion plus, how many will go back with God? I've asked the question, when God comes down, how many will go up? And I asked Enoch, I said, Enoch, you walked with the Lord. You live in heaven. You'll be there when he gathers the saints in heaven to come down to this earth to redeem his own from time, taking them into eternity, to live in paradise with him forever. How many, how many come back with him? And Enoch said, listen, I saw him prepare heaven to go down. And I saw him go down with 10,000 of his saints. I said, Enoch, I'm not interested how many come from heaven with him down to earth. How many from earth go back with him? He said, I only saw 10,000 of his saints go down. Well, I need to know better than that. I, I, am I wasting my time? Have, have, I, have I, Enoch? And I inquired and I inquired. Abraham said, well, I saw a city built without hands. And it just goes on. And finally, one day, 
with my Holy Ghost imagination, I flew out to the Isle of Patmos. I said, if there's anybody should know, it's John. God has meeting there with his elbow on his knee and his head in his hands. And I spoke to him, John, and he never acknowledged my presence. And, 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 I go. and then he was just looking up at the sky. And finally, I didn't dare touch him, but to, I raised my voice, John, it's Dick Barry. And he said, how you doing? I said, not too good. I have a question. I said, from all the signs in the book of Revelation that God has revealed to you of leading up to the end time and his return and the destruction of the earth and unrepentant sinners, John, you saw Jesus come down and he said, yes. And as he parted the clouds, every eye will see him. I said, well, that's what I want to talk to you about, John. When he comes, and he redeems the, earth, the people of his saints. And he sends the angels to go to the four corners of the earth and wake up those who sleep in the dust, who died faithful and obedient to him. John, how many go back with him? He said, oh, let me tell you, you're in for a shock. You're going to, he, when he, Jesus comes, he's going to show you things that you never saw or heard about. He's going to show you things that your mind cannot even comprehend. I don't want to hear that, John. How many people go back? And John says, man, when you part the clouds on the top side, you're going to see that holy city. New John, I've read about it. I've heard your description before. How many people will go back? And John looked at me, he stood up in my Holy Ghost imagination. He said, Dick Barron, Revelation chapter seven, verse nine, when Jesus leaves glory, there's gonna be a quiet time for half an hour prophetically. He's gonna bring everybody saint out of heaven with him. And I'm gonna preach about that tonight. And he's going to come down to this earth. And wherever his people are, dead or alive, he's going to gather them up. And he's going to give us a seven-day journey. John, John, how many people go back? And he said, Dick, the good news is, I, he showed me. And I saw a number that no man could number. I started jumping like the man outside the temple gate who had received healing in his feet and legs. I started shouting at the top of my voice, but then I caught myself. I said, oh, but John, a, a, a number that no man could number. Did you see me? He said, I saw people from every nation, kindred, tongue and people stay faithful because he that shall come will come that is the good news which says to me don't think about a number praise god for salvation that has come to you and live according to his word and live knowing that he dwells in you and that when he died on that cross he took every last one of your sins and bore them to that cross. And you're saved in Jesus, not later, but you're saved now because he is now. May God bless us. May God refresh us that our walk with him will hear that voice saying, keep coming, keep walking, stay faithful. And if you're not a member of his church, if you haven't turned your life over to him, I don't challenge you. I appeal to you, turn your life over to Jesus. His is a life worth living. He is coming back here. And if you remain in your sins, the wages of sin is death. 
but why pay twice the wages when Jesus already paid on Calvary in your behalf? Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, not out of fad, not out of tradition, but come to Jesus and be saved right now. And you can get in touch with Brother Thorpe and let him know. I hear, I've heard the good news. I want to turn away from the bad news and turn to Jesus Christ, who has let me know he can save me, not tomorrow, not next week, but he can save me right now with a salvation that is so pure, it's high quality, that when he forgives me of my sins, he forgives me with such a thoroughness and brings about such a purity that when he looks at me from now on, he treats me as if I had never sinned. I want that in my life. Accept the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and be ye saved. Father in heaven, the sun is about to set on the UK. With all of its problems as a nation, with all of the sin infestation, you are about to make call judgment on the United Kingdom and every nation of this world. You have, there are people there who love you. Lord, lock them in, seal them in, keep the devil away from them. And there are people there who are hearing about you for the first time, perhaps. There are people out there who want to love you. God, please, do that which only a loving God can do. Cast, cast their bad news into the sea, along with every sin they ever committed, and let the good news of Jesus Christ fill them to overflowing, fill them to everlasting. And Jesus, please, you made the promise and we believe you. Come quickly. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Baron. And we believe that those who have been listening today, especially those who are yet to make that important decision to follow Jesus all the way into the water of grave of baptism, uh, we're going to um, encourage you at this time uh, to indicate in your private chat, whether on Facebook Live or on our Zoom chat, indicate whether or not you'd like to uh, make that decision. We're going to be um, going into a breakout group right after our benediction. Um, this time we're going to have um, Sister Stacy Marshall singing a song of appeal. And um, Pastor Perry, I'm going to ask you to, do, to unmute and to do the closing prayer after. the strand on that love bright light 
Thank you, Sister Stacy. Amen. Camp. Amen. Pastor Perry, um, um, could you unmute your mic at this time and maybe camera and uh, give us the word of benediction? And, uh, and uh, brothers and sisters, if you want to be included in this prayer and if it is your desire um, to see Jesus and, and that nothing will, will hold you back or nothing will take your crown, maybe you can indicate uh, by a, a sign or something. Um, just you want to be included in this prayer you can indicate <coughs> page right now pastor perry why don't you go ahead and and, and pray for us you can't hear me I'm yes. oh gracious father you have come into our lives again today and by our waterfalls we can hear the sound of your coming the footsteps in heaven. We have listened to you, a man's servant today, and we have heard the invitation to come now because the signs are telling that the one who loves us so much wants to take us home. There are individuals today, Lord, who are making up their minds, and we pray, Lord, that they will hold fast to their faith and to the call of the one who lives forever. And mm -hmm. He wants to change things, change system, change the world, and give us a new insight into what is yet before us how the heavens will be open, where there will be no more crime, no more troubles, no more pain, no more death, where we shall see our Savior. Although we pray that the message today will have touched some heart. And that somebody, somebody's son, somebody's daughter 
somebody who has strayed away, someone who needs a solution for life, someone who's crying now, someone who needs the Savior. And in this pandemic, Lord, we pray that there will be souls that will be with you, Lord, that they will not go down in a Christless grave, but even now with your hands stretched out, they will say, Lord, enter my heart. I pray, Lord, today in particular, that somebody will say, Lord, hear my what will you have me to do? And there will be a change of life, a change of perspective. Lord, you're at the door. Help us to be ready, not getting ready, but be ready. Take our lives and let them be consecrated, Lord, to do. And for that husband, that wife, those children who may be in the marketplace, Lord, bring them home to you. And now we thank you, Lord, for what you have done. And as we break out in the chat group, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be there and will hear the voice of Jesus say, I am at the door. Let me come in and eat with you. May the atmosphere of heaven be created. And may we see Jesus, who loves us so much that he gave his life for us. Until that day, Lord, may we take this moment. And when we meet together in heaven, may we say, heaven at last, heaven at last. Thank God is heaven at last. And that it was this moment that we received the call. We know that we are in heaven at last. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you for the message and for your man, sir. And for Pastor Thorpe and his team. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May peace be with you until we meet again later at 5.30 p.m. with Dr. Fitzroy Graham. Um, until then, um, share and subscribe to our Facebook channel. Uh, we, we're doing our best. We wanting to pray for our technical team. They, um, we, they're doing their best um, and to communicate the gospel um, to you uh, on various platforms. Do pray for us as we, as we face these challenges. Uh, but share and subscribe to our channel. And um, remember to tell someone that the good news is the bad news is not true. God bless you. We'll have a time of fellowship. So you can turn on your camera, maybe say hi to the preacher. Uh, happy Sabbath. How do you do? God bless you. Uh, we do so um, right now, if you will.